Yay, I think we are live. Well, I am so excited <laughs> to be here today. Um, and the reason why I'm excited is besides the fact that I love spending time with Sam and just the wisdom that she brings and the fact that we've been friends forever and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but also I'm really actually excited about this particular training um, because we're going to be talking about holding something that's probably a little bit different for us as a Juice Plus family. And it's about, you know, Juice Plus at home. So that virtual party. And I know some of you, when you hear kind of party, you think, oh my God, is it one of those kind of, you know, old style parties that used to be held? Well, yes and no. It's actually bringing everything that we know that is successful about that mode of doing business and bringing it right up to date with how we get to do that online. Now, why is Sam such a... Uh, knowledge around all of this. She has attended over 60 parties. She's purchased at nearly every one of them. So she's now broke. Uh, Greg is wondering why strange packages keep turning up at her doorstep. But amongst all of that, though, she has learned so many hints and tips. I've only managed to get on about half a dozen. And that so I just hats off is all I can say. Um, but it is it's really a fun way to be able to share our amazing product, especially programs and business with people. So Sam is going to share her real hints and tips. And I have attended two of these training webinars and gone through another one where we worked together to be able to make this particularly for you, our Juice Plus family. So I know that there are lots and lots of hints and tips you're going to get here. So you get your pen, your paper, and let's roll. So over to you, Sam. Awesome. Thank you so much, Celine. Uh, so I'm really excited to be able to provide this training to you guys. Uh, for those of you that have been with Juice Plus for a while, you know that this is something that uh, you know we do a lot of trainings with you guys. Uh, we've been able to have the pleasure of working with you guys uh, a lot with various different trainings and bits and pieces. But this one in particular is one that I'm really excited about. Um, so, yep, we've done a few little tests and bits and pieces and Celine and I have been working really hard on putting this particular training together for you guys. Uh, and we're going to dive right on in. So I'm going to start off um, by just reminding you, this is your opportunity and your time to grow. Like many of you guys, I'm a mum too. So you'll probably appreciate this little note that the kids made for me and popped on my office door. Um, but one thing I will say is that I know we can't turn our kids off, but let's just, you know, flip our phones over. I'm going to turn mine over now, turn our emails off and just focus for the next little bit because I am going to give you guys a ton of awesome information. Um, we have, as Celine just said, attended over 60 parties, but what she didn't explain was we did that in 30 days. So I attended an average of two parties a day um, for all different companies. These weren't just Juice Plus. And what we've done is we've created for you guys the five steps to a virtual party or event. And this is what we're going to unpack with you guys today. We're going to give you a ton of information here um, and help you to run your own successful party. We're also going to talk to you about some best practices, do's and don'ts, and incorporate a little bit of compliance as well, because I know you will be fully aware that we've got to be very careful as well about how we share that amazing Juice Plus story too. We're also going to give you some tips on how to do those videos and lives. This is a bit that scares a lot of people when it comes to doing a virtual party or event. The thing that's so great about doing a virtual party or event is the fact that it gives you the opportunity to share the product, share your passion around the product, share how you use the products in your own world um, and help people to understand a little bit more about maybe how they can incorporate it into their lifestyle as well. And it's a really practical way of addressing the customers and not just the business opportunity because that's some, a space that we tend to focus on a lot. So we're sort of thinking here today about how can we really address the customer issues? How can we um, draw some more customers in? Because we all know the customers are what turn into the franchise partners and team down the track. So we're, we're really addressing that one in this. And a great way of doing that, of course, is by having great video and great live something that a lot of us think, oh, I don't have any experience in that space. What do I do if it all goes wrong? Or if I put myself in front of a camera, it's really daunting. So I'm going to help you build a bit of confidence in that space as well. Uh, we're also going to talk about the all-important engagement factor. 
getting success with any virtual party or event, I can tell you right now from experience comes right down to the very first interaction you have with the guests that are attending your party. It's not even the live portion. It's what you do before you go live and then how you use that information when you're live and when you do the follow-up uh, process. So we're going to take you right through the stages from the very beginning through to the stages at the end. It's not complicated, so don't stress. But the point of this is to help you to be able to build meaningful relationships that builds a long-term business. And then we're going to talk to you about the all-important closing of the sale. Now, again, this is probably not going to be outlined as you might expect because we're not going to talk to you about hard close. We're going to talk to you about naturally closing people, something that I know all of you want to be able to do. And many of you are fantastic at this in person. So we're going to talk to you as well about how you can do that when you go online. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of those five stages, I first want to talk about the things that tend to hold us back from going online and doing virtual parties or events or lives. And I want to address these because it's one thing for me to teach you all of the steps, but unless we can look at what it is that might be a little bit of a fear factor for us, what it is that might get in the way, it's very hard for us to move on from those things. So as I'm talking about these, I'd really love for you to stop and think to yourself about maybe do any of these apply to you? To those of you that are on live with us today, I'd love for you to comment in the chat box as we're going through if any of these things sound like, yep, you know what, that's me all over or there's something else that's been getting in my way. The first one is overwhelm and technology. Now, going virtual with your demonstrations with your amazing Juice Plus products involves a little bit of technology. And for some of us, that's a real discomfort, especially if it's technology we've never used before. So the overwhelm comes as part of, I don't know what to do and how to do it. But then there's also the overwhelm of watching other people in the industry or even in the Juice Plus business that seem to be doing this really well. And we start to compare ourselves to those people, which then leads to high expectations. What I would love for you guys to be doing is being gentle with yourself. Remember, you've got to start somewhere. So when it comes to running virtual parties or events, don't set the bar too high. You need to start at a place that you're comfortable with. And remember that each and every time you do this process, you're going to get better and you're going to learn something new and you're going to get more comfortable with it. So don't set the expectations really high. Even those people out there that have been doing this stuff for a while, the others in the business that you're watching doing incredible videos all of the time, they had to start somewhere and they've learned by practicing and you'll do exactly the same. So don't compare yourself to others in the field or in the industry. The next one is a really big one. What will people think? If I do a video and I put it out there, what will people think? If I tell my family and friends about my Juice Plus business, what will people think? If I put myself out there, what will people think? Well, as we hover on this one for a minute, I want to tell you guys that this is something that if this is uh, one of those setbacks or one of those things that hold you back, um, it's likely that it does for many other people around you too. Now, this is a big issue even for me. So those people that get in front of a camera every day, and we do webinars literally every day of the week at the moment, this is still something that bothers me each and every time. What will people think? It's that little voice in the back of your head that's sort of muttering to you and telling you to think about what will people think? Each time I get on stage, I worry about the same thing. But I'm going to give you a little piece of wisdom that someone very special once told me. I was about to get on stage uh, at a conference and uh, there were about 900 people sitting in the audience. And I rang Celine. I was hyperventilating. I was panicking and I was petrified to get on that stage. Not because I didn't know my stuff back to front, not because I hadn't memorized my presentation, not because I didn't necessarily feel confident that I knew what I was doing, but because I was worried about what will people think. So I rang her and I said, what do I do? Am I going to be feeling this each and every time I get on stage? She said two things to me, and you might have heard her say these before, but the first one was, if 
the day that you stop worrying about this, the day that you stop uh, having stresses uh, when you get on stage, the day that you stop, uh, that's the day that you stop caring. And she said, if you ever don't feel nervous when you get on stage, that's a bad sign because it means that you haven't got that care factor in there. So she wanted me to feel that nerve. And I said to her, I don't feel comfortable with that, but you know, it is what it is. The other thing she said to me that I really, really want to stress today as we go into doing virtual parties and events is this. She said, what people think of you is none of your business and you can't change it. So don't hold yourself back from sharing your gift with the world, what you're passionate about with the world, which for each and every one of you is obviously the what the incredible Juice Plus products can do for lives. If you hold yourself back worrying about something you can't change that is none of your business, then you're going to miss being able to share it with people. So each time I get on a webinar or each time I get on stage now, I listen to that mama wisdom, which she's just pop in, popped in the chat box here. I listen to that mama wisdom and I remind myself of what Celine said. It's none of your business, so ignore it. Get out there and do what it is that you've got to do. So this is another one of those things that tend to hold a lot of us back. Another one and probably the biggest one for so many of us right now when it comes to virtual parties and events and this scary space is the fear of failure. What if I don't get any orders? What if I let my host down? What if uh, I let my team down? Um, what if it just doesn't work? What if the video doesn't work? What if it drops out? And then we start worrying about that whole fear of failure thing and it becomes easier to not do it because we might fail than it is to get out there and have a crack. So my question to you is, do any of these sound a little bit familiar? Have any of these things held you back? I want to share a little secret with you. And remember, we have trained thousands and thousands of people now over the last few months on how to run virtual parties and events, right through from 20-year-olds to 90-odd-year-olds, and we have seen people smashing it. The thing is that no matter how old you are, no matter what your experience or technical ability is, each and every one of you guys has everything you need within you right now to master this, all right? So there's nothing that you need that you don't already have. So let's have a little bit of a look at what online could look like for you. We have, like I said, been running this training for a little while, and I wanted to share a couple of these with you guys because, and these aren't necessarily from Juice Plus, they're from people in all different industries, but that, uh, sorry, all different businesses within the direct selling industry. But I spoke to Selena, I said, can I share these? Because I really wanted to give you guys some inspiration on where you can get to just by branching in and having a go in this space. This person here is somebody who was adamant they were never, ever going to have a crack at doing a virtual party or event. And after being pressured by their leader several times to stop postponing their parties when isolation happened, she had a go. She did two parties and she was on a roll and this was a message she sent through to us after she did our virtual party training and she got in there and had a go and again this sort of stuff just makes my heart sing we then asked a question on our facebook page what have you learned since you started doing virtual parties and events and these were some of the things that came back i love this one here from Faye that i can go live and i won't burst into flames so just a little reminder, it doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter what your experience is, doesn't matter what your technical ability is, you absolutely can do this. And I can promise you have a lot of fun doing it too once you get in and have a go. The hardest part is simply getting started. So how is a virtual party different from doing an in-home party or event, one where you are interacting with people face-to-face? -face? Well, to be perfectly honest, they're not all that different. Virtual parties are very, very similar. In fact, the more closely you can run a virtual party to an in-home party, the better it's likely to go. The reason I say that is because what makes an in-home party work so well is because we're generally interacting and engaging with people one-on-one. -on -one, and that's what we really want you to be doing when you're doing a virtual party. What does change for us though, is the fact that we have it harder to bring the senses into play. So taste, touch, smell. So we wanna be able to bring them in in a different way by storytelling. And uh, we're gonna give you some little uh, suggestions and tips and tricks as we go through today. But for example, as you make a recipe and you taste it, you wanna tell people, you know, 
descriptively where that's taking you or, or exactly what that tastes like to you so that you can help them go on that journey. It's not something you necessarily have to do at an in-home party because you can literally hand it over to them. So just a bit of practice when it comes to storytelling is all you need in this space to make an in-home party, uh, sorry, an online party work really well. But remember, engage, engage, engage. And we're going to give you lots of tips to do that today as well. Now, as I mentioned before, an online party is also about focusing on the customer and the products. So this is the product experience more so than the business opportunity. And that's what we really want to focus on, that product experience. So what are the five stages of a virtual party? Well, I'm going to walk you through them and then we're going to do a little deep dive into them. The first one is set up and host training. Second is inviting guests and pre-engagement. We've then got the all-important going live, closing the sale, and the follow-up process. Now, I just want to start by saying that each and every one of these leads into the next. We have been doing this training for a long time, but once we started doing our, we, we uh, started going to these virtual parties and events uh, in March, um, we knew that we were going to have to rebuild this training to place some more emphasis in some areas that we knew people were really struggling with. One of those was the very, very beginning process of setting up and host training. The reason being is we were seeing lots of people skipping over this step because they didn't see it as being massively important and they wanted to just get to the bit where they sold stuff. The trouble is if you don't follow steps one and two correctly, then when you get to step four, it becomes unnatural and it feels really heavily salesy. So we're going to show you how to make all of that feel natural. And this, remember, is about connecting with new customers, building new relationships uh, and creating new raving fans, followers, and hopefully down the track, customers and team. So let's start with stage one, set up and host training. Now, don't gloss over this. Like I've already said, this is really important that we get this stage right because it's going to set the whole scene for the rest of our event. The first step here that we need to focus on is how it is that we're going to share this live or this event with people. Our recommendation is to set up a Facebook event. I much prefer Facebook events over groups and there's a couple of reasons for this. Mind you, these are best practices. So there's no one size fits all. You can get in and play around with this. But what we've learned from doing Facebook events is that several things happen. The first is that you're able to see exactly who is RSVP'd, if, even if you're not a friend with them. The other thing is that you're going to be able to set a specific start date and time that everyone is really clear about. You're also not providing a barrier where people have to join something before they can attend the event. Remember that a lot of people that come into this event as a guest may be coming in and having an experience with you and or Juice Plus for the very first time. So we want to make it as simple and easy for them to do that without them feeling like they have to commit to anything before they've got a bit of a feel for you or for the product. So setting up an event is a good way to let them RSVP in, but they're not stuck in anything for life. However, if you prefer to try group, that's also fine and completely up to you. We recommend setting your event or your group up a three to seven days before you plan to go live. The reason we say that period of time is because three or anything less than that is simply not enough time for you to get organized, to invite people in and to pre-engage them. That's a really important step. But any more than seven days and people just simply don't have time, uh, just, they start to forget about it. They've got other things going on in their world and uh, and they're less likely to show up. And remembering you want people to not just RSVP, you actually want them to rock up live. Now, another thing I love about an event is that you're able to invite your host as a co-host. So again, this adds a little element of uh, recognition to those people that are guests and it shows them that although you're the, the franchise partner, they've also got their friend that they know hosting or co-hosting the event alongside of you. Now, if you've got a Facebook business page, which we always recommend that you do have a Facebook business page, if you can, that's a really great way to promote your Juice Plus business. Um, use this as an opportunity to get people to come and follow your business page. And if you're setting an event up, you can actually use your business page to set that event up as well, which is a really great way to cross-promote. 
You also want to make sure that you're training that co-host with really simple and manageable instructions. Remember, this is not their business, it's yours. So don't give them a never-ending list of instructions that's going to seem overwhelming and frustrating for them. You don't want them to feel annoyed at the process. You want them to enjoy the process. So simple, manageable instructions. And all important, test your tech beforehand. Don't make that time that you go live the very first time that you're testing your tech out. You definitely don't want people to feel like uh, you are messing around and playing with things uh, and using them as the test dummies. Now, a couple of things here as well that I just want to speak into as we go through. Unlike standard party plan, obviously we don't with Juice Plus have um, a gift uh, set up where people earn a certain number of gifts. However, what's way better in my opinion about what you guys have got is you've got the freedom and flexibility to do whatever you want. You can make up your own little uh, host incentives. You can make up special gifts that are tailored to your host. Um, I actually uh, created my own little gift idea um, uh, yesterday that I thought might provide a little bit of inspiration for some of you guys. Remembering that you can provide complete uh, samples and you can provide complete samples not just to your host if you want, you can also provide them to the guests that show up and we'll talk about that as we go through. But you've got things like the uh, Juice Plus branded NFP Connect diaries. You've got amazing Juice Plus uh, merchandise. We've also got the complete uh, bulk complete, which is a great thing that you can also supply them. So I just made up a little sample of, you know, maybe a little host incentive gift uh, that you could put together. And this could look like anything. You could go down to Kmart. You could get yourself some gratitude journals. Um, and don't forget as well that if you go to the Juice Plus sales tools, you've got lots of resources in there as well, little thank you cards and all sorts of bits and pieces. So uh, to provide a little host incentive, you could either make this something that maybe uh, they, they get more or they get something a little bit extra if a certain number of guests show up or if you get a certain number of orders. Um, it's completely up to you. You guys have actually got amazing flexibility in this space around what you do. So let's talk about some host training tips now to help you get that host excited this process is important to get them working on your behalf. You remember that the host can become a little salesperson on your side. They're already connected with the guests that are coming along because they're inviting in their own family and friends. If you train your host well and you get them excited about what you're doing, they're much more likely to jump on in and interact as well uh, with everybody and even do a bit of sales on your behalf too. So let them know um, how you expect them to be involved. Don't leave it all up to you. Don't make it you the only one that's doing any interaction. So give them some clear steps and ways that they can get involved that don't feel like work, that are simple and fun. And again, we'll give you some suggestions on that. Um, but remember, this is their party. You are simply running the demonstration. I can't tell you how many virtual parties we went to where we saw the uh, demonstrator or the consultant simply not addressing or acknowledging the host at all. Remember, you don't have this opportunity without them. So you want to thank them and make them feel really special. So find out, you know, how do they want this event to go? What are they excited that you're going to showcase? Maybe even get some ideas from them around what sort of recipes they would love to see you demonstrate. Um, Celine's also just said, just imagine a lovely pack in the post arriving for them to open and a lovely thank you card from you. So these are really important little touches that are going to make someone feel super special. Now, another little tip here for you to help the host along on her journey is to go through the invite list with the host before they start adding people. Now, the reason this one's an important step is because a lot of hosts will automatically go, let's just invite our whole friends list. And you definitely don't want that to happen. We're going to talk about inviting in the next stage. But just at this point, remember that going through that list with your host and coaching them through the process of invitations is a really valuable and important step to the success of how the event goes. 
And also encourage them as well to engage with the event. Get them to post and be active in the live. We've got a really awesome little host checklist as well as a uh, franchise partner checklist as you as well for you guys that are going to be provided uh, as part of all of this. So you guys can go in and download those uh, and you'll be able to use them. There's going to be some great resources available for all of you guys in the virtual office. So we'll talk to you about that as we go through today. Now, also make sure as well that you tell the host uh, about that potential thank you gift in advance. Don't make it a surprise at the very end because you want them to feel um, like they're being acknowledged right from the start. Make them feel special right from the beginning. If you want to keep it a bit of a secret or a surprise and, and you don't want to tell them exactly what they're going to get, that's okay. But make sure that they know you really appreciate them. So again, they're working on your behalf. Now, in order to provide the host training tips, I said in the last slide that you want to keep it short, sharp, and simple. Don't give them a long, uh, you know, Word document that's two pages long that gives them a long list of all of the things they've got to do. What I would suggest that you do is provide them with either a simple document, and again, we'll give you guys a little checklist you can use or you can create your own, or even record a quick little video of you speaking directly to that person using their name, which is a really good way of making them feel special, and just tell them what are the steps you want them to do. If you want to break it down, you could leave them a little uh, voice message or a little video each day in the seven-day lead-up so that you're breaking it right down and making it really simple. In one of the parties that I hosted, I actually had the consultant contact me each day and tell me, firstly, she was so excited about making me feel really special on Saturday and spoiling me. But then she would ask me to do something for her and it was really simple, really easy to do. It was a very clever way of making me feel an important part of that process, but also making those steps really simple so that I didn't get frustrated or overwhelmed as the host. So stage two, inviting guests and the all-important pre-engagement. This is your opportunity to make new connections, new potential customers, new potential team, but also your opportunity to build relationships. You'll notice that a lot of the uh, leaders in our company are the people who uh, have built those meaningful relationships over time. And so each of you guys will have an opportunity here to do this right from the second you come into first contact with them. So the first step is inviting guests so they actually show up. So here are a few tips to help you with that. I mentioned before, don't encourage your host to invite their whole friends list. So what I would suggest that you do is help them make those invitations personal. And a really great way of doing that is offering your host a script they can adjust. Now, when it comes to the number that they invite in, there is actually a formula and a key to getting people to showing up live. Here's the trick. Now, I've said to you guys before, we do a lot of webinars, we do a lot of lives, we do a lot of Zooms. We know what the general numbers are you can look for when you're running any online event. Now, here's how it works. If you want to get 10 people to show up, which is a really good number to show up to your live event, you, uh, any more than that, just a little tip here, any more than that, it becomes a bit harder for you to interact personally with each individual. Um, so 10 for me is a, a really good number. If you want 10 people to show up, then you need to double that number and then you need to double that number again. So if I invite 50 people to my virtual party or event and I invite them with personal invitations, I can expect around about 20 to 25 of those 50 people will show up. Uh, sorry, 20 to 25 of those 50 people will RSVP. Of those 20 to 25 people, half of them are actually going to show up live. Now, if your numbers are better than that, well done, awesome work. If they're a little bit lower, you might want to have a little bit of a, a, a look at how you're inviting them in. So I'm just going to repeat that again. If you invite 50 people, you can assume that 50% of them will RSVP and 50% of those people are likely to actually show up live. It's very different to doing an in-home party because people know full well that they're not putting you out in the same way if they don't rock up. Plus, people get busy and they forget. So the way that you go through this process will determine how many of those people actually rock up. So whatever those numbers are that you want, if you want it to be five people showing up live, again, same formula, double the number, then double that number again. And that's the number that you want to encourage your host to invite in. Now, doing 
personal invitations is an important part of this particular process. Because when we set up a Facebook event, we've got the option to simply tick the box for Facebook to send a notification to the guests we want to come in um, to RSVP to the event. Now, a notification on Facebook is very easily missed. So I would suggest that you get your host to also send a second invitation to them that is either a messenger uh, invitation or an SMS or even an email. Now, in those invitations, a short, sharp, simple script that's tailored for each individual guest is a valuable way to go about this. So using their name is one of those important things that's going to make the person feel personally considered. Um, again, on the host checklist uh, that we've put together with Celine for you guys, there's actually a little script in there that you can use should you wish to do so. So remember, and this is a little bit of a tip as we go through to the closing towards the end, but I just want to share this with you now because now is when it's really important. The best way for you to sell is to actually not be selling. It's to be focused on providing value and share your knowledge. And there is so much amazing knowledge around the Juice Plus products out there. Again, if you check in the virtual office under Facebook parties, uh, there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff loaded in there for you guys to access to help you with this. But providing value in the engagement stage, really important. So some tips to pre-engage. The first thing I want to say is this is not your opportunity to sell. In fact, try and refrain from selling to people in the pre-engagement phase. Remember that a lot of these guests don't know you yet. So this is your opportunity to start to help them warm up towards you, get to know you and also get to know Juice Plus as well, just a little bit. Remembering a lot of these people will never have come across the product or maybe they have, but they know very little about it. So you want to start to build that relationship. This is all about dating your customer. I love to refer to it as dating your customer. It's getting to know them over time. So the first thing you can do to help with this process is as people RSVP in the event, and again, another reason I love events is because you can actually uh, send a private message, even if you're not friends with them, send a private message being the host in the event to anyone who's RSVP'd yes. Now, a little tip here, if they have an RSVP'd yes, uh, it's a little bit of a, a gray area, but they haven't really invited you in or they haven't given you permission yet to reach out to them. So be a bit cautious about um, reaching out to people that uh, haven't given that permission at this point. These are the guests of your host. They're not your guests yet. So when they RSVP, yes, it's a good opportunity now for you to reach out and introduce yourself, but be very careful not to hound the people that haven't RSVP'd into the group or sorry, into the event yet. That's still the job for the host to do because they already know them and they've got that relationship. Um, and part of that process, get your host to re-reach out to everybody who hasn't RSVP'd a day or two before the event, just to remind them to RSVP yes or no. That will give you a few more people that you can reach out to personally before the event goes live. So reaching out personally to people, uh, then find out something from a host about each guest and get yourself a little bit of paper, jot down the names of the people attending and whatever it is you can find out about them. Now, this doesn't have to be complicated. This could be something like, what's their lifestyle like? Do they have kids? Do they work? Are they stay at home parents? What's their life like? What's their health like? And here's a really clever question that you can ask. Who do you think is most likely to host their own event of course, you're going to give them a special gift for doing it, but who do they think might be most likely to host their own event and get this special gift? They're going to give you a few little pointers on who you might be able to spend a little bit more time speaking to about this opportunity. And again, they may not know about, you know, they might be uh, off with this, but they know these people really well. So if they know that someone might be a waste of time for you to be spending too much time on in this space, then they're going to steer you towards the people that are most likely. So they know these people well. Use that. Use their knowledge. Um, so write down something that the host can tell you about each guest. Again, don't pepper them with questions. Just give, just get a little tidbit of information. It's going to help you because you're going to be able to use that when you go live. 
Also, uh, within the event, asking questions to engage with each people with people each day is important to do as well because it allows you to not only um, uh, help teach them a little bit of information about GIS Plus in advance, but it also helps you get to know them as well. So you can be a bit clever about what these questions are. And I've got actually a slide here with some question ideas that you can pop in to pre-engage people in advance. Also provide value tips and tricks during the week. So depending on what virtual party you're doing, whether you're doing a smoothie party or whether you're uh, create, you're actually cooking some recipes or whether you're just simply doing product demo, um, Celine's given you guys some really great examples of various different um, virtual parties that you can run. You can provide some value tips and tricks that are relevant to whatever the theme might be for that particular party. It could also be that you know that your host has got a particular interest that they really want you to speak into. So it might be around, you know, breakfasts and smoothies or um, or it could be easy family cooking for the kids uh, or how to get more fruit and veg into the kids. So um, some value tips and tricks uh, throughout the week that's not about selling. Remember, not about selling. Also then giving sneak peeks and creating curiosity. I love the idea of creating curiosity and intrigue in advance. So you don't tell them everything that's going to happen, but you give them something exciting to look forward to. So maybe you could tell them, I'm going to share with you a recipe that is going to save you mountains of time and keep your family super healthy all through the week. Uh, or you can tell them that you're going to be doing a little giveaway during the party, but they've got to they've got to show up live to find out what that giveaway is. Maybe you can even show them what you're going to give away. Maybe it might be some of those gratitude journals, or even potentially a bulk complete or some samples, something along those lines. But give some sneak peeks, create some curiosity. Um, all right, so let's have a look at some pre-engagement post ideas because, of course, we want to be able to get to know them. We want to build that uh, that anticipation uh, and build those relationships because, again, when you get to the closing stage, it's going to make everything flow so much better. So, first of all, Juice Plus Kitchen Recipes and What Would You Rather questions are a really great way to create some pre-engagement. Providing the kids resource downloads. There are some beautiful things that have been created for you guys to simply give away um, that are relevant for parents. Things like mindful listening worksheets. There's a scavenger hunt, coloring in sheets, all sorts of bits and pieces. These are all about providing value. Product fact sheets, again, providing value. Question, how do you get fruit and veg into your diet each day right now? So a great way of getting a bit of pre-engagement. Another question that's a really good way of getting everyone interacting and having some fun, how do you know the host? Remembering that these guys potentially have known the host for quite some time and I've seen this one go really well and a lot of laughs are had around that question. If you were only allowed to take one beauty or healthcare product away on holiday for a week, what would you take? Ask them to share a gift to tell you something like, what do they do for a living? Their favorite dance move? How do they like to relax? What will they wear to the party? Again, there's no rules here. You can have some fun. What are they most excited to see at the party? And if you were gifted $100 to spend at the party, what would you buy? So loads of stuff in this space that you guys can have some good fun with. Now, I just want to do a quick sound check as well right now to make sure everyone can still hear and see me okay. So if you can, give me a little thumbs up in the chat box. Everyone's being nice and quiet, which means you're probably taking a ton of notes. But I just want to make sure that you can all hear and see me okay. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to dive now into the going live stage. This bit here is the bit that scares so many of us. So I want to talk to you about the two key ways that you can go live. Now, there are loads of different platforms and methods out there that you can use, but these are my two favorite and there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, most people out there from a guest perspective know how to use one or both of these. So you're making it really user friendly if you use a platform people are already familiar with. If you get out there and you get tricky and you try to use something that people have never seen, they potentially have to download it. They've got to kind of navigate around, get used to it. And it can then lead to a few people simply not showing up because it's just the technology is too hard. So I love using things that people recognize. Now, my favorite in this space is Zoom. And the reason I love Zoom so much is because it replicates an in-home party more so than doing a Facebook Live. You can actually interact with people, see their faces, speak into things, 
you can even see what's going on for them in their world. So for example, when you do a Zoom, you'll be able to see their faces. Maybe if they've got kids floating around, you can acknowledge the kids. You can even speak into the fact that they've got kids and you've got an amazing Healthy Starts program as well. Um, you might be able to see what sort of kitchen equipment they have if they want to show you, and then you can adapt your recipes and suggest some things that they could do differently. So Zoom is a really great way for you to really interact with people on a more personal level. It also eliminates uh, the risk of you turning into a broadcaster or a newsreader, which is something that Facebook Live tends to have us doing. When we do Facebook Live, because we can't see everyone on the other end, often we fall into the trap of simply talking to people and not having that interaction back and forth, which is the bit that's really going to help you build those relationships as you go through. The other thing I love about Zoom, especially right now, is it provides a little social element for them to cross interact with each other too. So you'll notice if you have a little bit of a look uh, at some of the, um, you guys still got me? Can I just check that you've got me okay, guys? I've just had someone say that they've lost our audio. Give me a little thumbs up if we're good. Awesome. Okay. So, um, so Zoom, great for that. There is a little downside though to Zoom, which I do want to point out, and that is that when we do Zoom, um, there is the need there to download um, the program. So it does create another little tiny barrier. Not a very big one because most people already know how to use it, especially after the period that we've just been through. But just keep that one in mind that that could potentially be uh, an issue. The other thing, of course, is that because people have to work out their own speaker, their own audio, microphone, camera, there's also a little bit of technical issues in there. But one thing I'll give you as a little tip here to help with this uh, to eliminate any problems is just to let people know as well that um, you're going to go live 10 minutes early. So if it's seven o'clock that you're doing the event, tell them it's 6.50 for seven o'clock. Everyone has to show up early. Maybe you'll even have some giveaways to incentivize them to do that. But then that way you can get rid of, iron out any technical problems in the early stages. Facebook Live, however, completely free and it's as simple as people showing up in the event and they'll be able to see the video there. So really easy in that sense. Now, look at this beautiful woman. Celine has also done a demonstration uh, in home recording for you guys to give you some examples of not only how to do your own event, but also how to be compliant in your examples. Now, we're not going to dive into compliance too much today, but I am going to pre-warn you that you absolutely need to make sure that whatever it is that you're saying is 100% compliant. So do get in, watch that little video. Her host was spectacular. Um, and she will give you some demonstrations that you can check out in this space um, so that you can almost follow along on her formula as well in that space. Now, something else I'm going to remind you is if you're wanting a little bit of a guide on uh, what you can say and do, and even if you want just something to follow along with to help you with this process too when you're doing your presentation, remember that there are a bunch of fact sheets out there. And again, in the virtual office, if you refer to that under Facebook parties, you will see fact sheets, links, videos, resources, heaps of stuff, including the checklist I've been talking to you about today, are all going to be available in there for you guys to check out as well. Uh, they will be available very, very soon. So you can download those resources and use them. Now, I'm going to give you a few live tips to help you with the live process. The first, be yourself. Be yourself because when you're being someone else, it's very hard for people to connect to you. Remember that people buy from people that they like, know, and trust. And you want to help them do that by being your amazing, unique self. So share yourself with everyone. Share your passion, who you are, what you do, and why you do it. And remember, people don't care about the company as much as they care about what you love about the company. So use this as an opportunity to share what you love about the company and what you love about the programs within Juice Plus as well. Pick up your energy. When you go live, whenever you do anything live, it's very different to doing it in home because in home you can use body language so much more. You, people can't just get up and walk out. Whereas if you're doing a live, they can switch off and walk away. So pick that energy of yours up. Now, here are my tips for picking up your energy. I know Celine's probably the best person to tell you this because she's always so energetic when she gets onto her lives, but I'm going to give you my tips. These are the things that I do before I ever do a webinar, before I ever do a live video or recording, or before I ever get on stage to speak in an event. 
The first thing is I pick a game on song. Now, for those of you on live watching us now, I'd love you to jump into that chat box and tell me, what's your game on song? The game on song, and I'm going to call these out. I'm going to share some of them. But your game on song is a song that gets you excited. It gets you your blood pumping. It gets you, you revved up. And it's the sort of song that if you're sitting in a restaurant or a pub and it starts playing, you start sort of, you know, bopping about on your chair and you just want to sing along. So I want you guys to pop your Game On song in the chat box. My, I've got a number of Game On songs. My favourite one, though, is Jump by Van Halen and Amazing by Vanessa Amorossi. I've got heaps of them. Spark loads. Here we go. We've got a few ideas coming in here. Black Eyed Peas, Pump It Up, Shake It Out. Yeah, loads of great stuff. Uh, Eye of the Tiger is one that comes up every time I talk about this. So what you need to do is play that Game On song and then you are going to move your body. You're going to get your body going, get your blood moving through your body. Now, once you've done that, and seriously, it doesn't matter if you're a bad dancer, go take yourself out in a quiet room somewhere and do it before you go on to your virtual party. I promise it will pick your energy up. But right before you go live, here's my suggestion. This is what I do every time I do any event, any webinar, any live. Stop, close your eyes, and imagine how you're going to feel when you come out the other side. So essentially, you're going to picture what you're going to feel about how it all went on the other side. Now, this isn't about how it went as far as physical um, uh, uh, results goes. This is more about how you want to feel. So I want to feel successful or I want to feel tech savvy or I want to feel connected. I want to feel achieved. I want to feel excited. Whatever that looks like for you, just imagine yourself feeling that right now and picture what it's going to be when you come out the other side and then hit go and you're away. So pick up your energy. Also, keep it short and respect people's time. Um, a good amount of time to go live for a virtual party or event is around 30 to 45 minutes. If you go too much longer than that, you start to lose people's attention. Another thing that's valuable to do is use their names all throughout. So this is why I suggested you write down their names and something you found out about them throughout the pre-engagement process or from the host on a bit of paper in front of you. That way, as you're live, you can speak into those things and use your knowledge to interact with them during. So if you share a particular recipe that you know the mum in the group is going to love, you can speak into that person specifically. Now, here is a really big one, guys. Don't have private conversations with individual guests. Now, what I mean by this is through all of those virtual parties and events we did, there were a few times I nearly threw my phone. <laughs> I'm not an angry person, but I got so frustrated because these people would stop. And this usually happens in Facebook Live, but they would stop and do this. Hi, Kirsten. Oh, so you've tried the choose before. Um, do you need some more choose or are you just wanting to find out about the complete? Oh, you, you do want to find out about the complete? Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to show you a recipe and I'll show you how you can use the complete today as well. Now, you can see, first of all, if you do a Facebook Live, you're going to get a little delay before they respond around 15 to 20 seconds, which is super awkward. The other thing is everyone else in here right now, just as I did that, probably felt a bit like they were listening in on a private conversation and it gets really awkward and uncomfortable. So what you should do instead is involve everybody, but still interact with people one-on-one. -on -one. Now, I know this takes practice, but I'm going to give you an example so you can see what I mean. Hey, Kirsten. Okay, so you've got the choose. Are you interested in finding out a little bit more about the complete? Because what I'm actually going to do for all of you guys today is we are going to talk about the choose, but I'm also going to share an amazing complete recipe with all of you. You would like to hear about the complete. Awesome. I'm going to show you guys a recipe that you can all use with the complete. That way, Kirsten feels acknowledged, but, which she does right now, but she also doesn't feel like you're having a private conversation with her one-on-one -on -one and you haven't left everybody else out. So please make sure that you involve everybody because everyone is equally there. Also, set the expectations of the event nice and early. So start with a super quick introduction, who you are, what you do, why you do it. So that five minutes of, and again, watch Celine's because she does this really well. Uh, you'll be able to see how she does this process. So quick five-minute intro, then tell them how long this is going to go for. So guys, today I'm going to be taking around 45 minutes. During that time, I'm going to share with you my top 
three favorite Juice Plus recipes. I'm also going to share with you my two favorite Juice Plus products, and I'm going to tell you why I love them so much. I'm going to tell you a quick little bit of information about the products and the company, and then I'm going to share with you exactly how you can order from me today or host your very own party and get a very special host gift. And then at the very end, we're going to do something really special and we're going to raffle off a special prize, but you have to wait till the end. Now, that's just something I threw in because that's what I call dangling the carrot. Make sure that people stay there for the whole time. But as soon as you do this, people then know what to expect. They relax a little bit more because they know this is going to go 45 minutes. They know exactly what you're going to cover and talk about and they feel a little bit prepared. And remember to make it fun and interactive and definitely don't broadcast or newsread. Interact with people. Build those relationships. Now, a few little video tips for you guys I'm going to whip through with you. Camera angle. Don't have your camera set too low or too high. A lot of people will set their camera down below their face here. First thing is it makes people feel like you're speaking down to them. So it makes you less approachable. The other problem with that is, of course, chins. If you're like me, it's not a very flattering angle. So have your camera, if you can, sitting at eye level or slightly above. Um, we highly recommend getting a little tripod or something along those lines uh, um, to help you with that. We've got some amazing ones that we stock that we know work really, really well. Check your background and clean your lens. Your phone sits in dirty places like your pocket or your handbag, or if you're like me with four kids, in their grubby hands. So make sure that you've given your lenses a little clean first because it will make your video so much better. Check your lighting, check your sound, check your internet connection. If your internet connection drops out, so will your video and you'll lose everyone. So it's a good idea to have a little backup plan. Even know how to hotspot uh, at the very last minute if you have to to your mobile phone. And of course, the best way to eliminate any problems in this space is to do a practice run. Also, think about bringing a buddy in with you, someone else in your team, maybe even a family member that can be watching the chat for you so you don't have to be sitting there monitoring the chat while you're trying to do your presentation. Now, another little tip for you when you do video is that your camera, if you're using your phone, is best optimised when it is landscape rather than portrait. So all of these people here, bar this one up the top, you can see the difference, have gone with portrait. Good old Mitchy, I need to have a chat with him, don't I? Um, this is what it will look like if you go landscape. It will fill up the space and if you can see here, you've got so much more room to move to demonstrate your products, move around your kitchen if that's what you're doing. Okay, stage four, the clothes. Don't chicken out. It's why they're there. Everybody knows that you are doing a virtual party or event to tell them about some products they potentially can buy. They know you're going to sell to them. So the best thing you can do is make it really clear how they can buy and make it feel really natural. And if you've done the processes that we've just spoken about, this will come naturally. It will happen naturally. So here are a few tips to make it feel natural. The first is make them feel special. Do things like draws for prizes, offer them the free cookbook downloads available to you. There's several out there that you can offer them. Samples of complete throughout the event. So what this will allow you to do is follow the person up and say, so you've, I'm sending you a sample of the complete, but is there anything else that you'd like to talk about that we might be able to order for you and I can send it all together? Or we're going to send you the, I'm going to send you the link to the cookbook download. What else are you interested in? So it allows you to start that conversation. Tie it into a need. So as you've got to know them over this period of time, you can now tie the products into a particular need. And that will allow you to make this process feel so much more natural. Remind them as well of what they liked. So if you pay attention to them during a Zoom or even in their lead up to in the engagement phase, you'll be able to come back to them and remind them of the things that got them excited. Also, make the buying process clear and simple. So don't make it complicated. Here are some creative ways to uncomplicate the ordering process. Now, you guys have got amazing tools available right at your fingertips. The first thing I'm going to say, though, is that by sending people off to an external website, after you've given them all this amazing service and done this demonstration, if you send them off to the website to navigate their own way around, it's like a kid in a candy store. They kind of don't know where to go. They get a bit overwhelmed uh, and they often end up buying something that maybe wasn't what they went in there for or they don't buy anything at all. Maybe it's not like a kid in a candy store. If I sent my kids in, I'm pretty sure that that's not what would happen. But what I, what I liken this to is if you're at an in-home party 
and you finish your party and uh, you get to the ordering process. Sending people to a website is kind of like sending everyone at your in-home party down to the local shop to make their purchase. Then tell them to come back so you can finish off the event. So what I encourage you to do is keep them all within the event and keep that amazing customer service going. Keep that interaction going with them. You guys are able in this business to provide them with um, service that is second to none that allows them to get that personalized help to get what they really need and want. So one of the amazing tools that's been given to you by Juice Plus is the cart sharing tool. So I love Google Forms because they're completely free. You can I'm going to show you an example of one in a sec, but you can set up your own Google Form where you can ask people for specific information they can give you um, and then you can follow them up with that information. You can then find out from them what it is that they want to order and you can set it up in the cart sharing tool and simply share it with them so they can complete that purchase. It's also a good idea as well for those that you know that are particularly excited to get everyone else excited to get their order by incentivizing them to tell you while you're live what it is that they're going to order. That'll help encourage others um, and break that ice a little bit as well. You could give them a call to action too. So it might be uh, if you order by a certain date, then you know, there's, you're know you going to go on the draw to win or you're going to get an extra sample or something along those lines. Okay, I just wanted to share this with you because as I mentioned, you guys have got the amazing cart sharing tool that allows you to pop their order in there ready to go so that they don't have to navigate their way around and work out, am I purchasing the right thing? Is this what Sam meant? You can do it for them, share it with them, and they just complete that purchase. Um, most of you would have seen this before, but I just wanted to share this with you in case you hadn't. So all you need to do is click your share cart with customer uh, button down the bottom once you've filled in all of the details. Quick and easy process, really amazing tool, definitely one for you to get in and have a play with. Um, this is an example of, and I know Celine, I think she's going to provide you guys as well with a link to her Google form that you guys can clone. So you'll be able to take what she's already created and recreate your own with this. Yep. She's given me the thumbs up in here. This is what the Google form looks like. And again, you can edit this to include just the information you want. As soon as someone hits the submit button on the bottom, it emails it to them and it emails it to you. So you can quickly follow them up, have that conversation with them and get to know them and help them with their order. A few little don'ts for you guys. Don't leave it to them to contact you. Don't leave it open-ended. Don't forget to tell them exactly how to order while you're live and don't be afraid to ask for the sale. Remember, it's why they're there and they know full well you're going to be promoting the product. So go ahead and do it and know it's what they expect and they're waiting for you to do it. Okay, last stage and probably the most important is the follow-up. Keeping in mind that people won't remember what you said, but they will remember how you made them feel. So don't be too focused on uh, getting people to purchase right now because sometimes it's about nurturing those people and uh, down the track, they can become your biggest raving fans, followers, customers, and even team. So a few tips to help you with nurturing people regardless of whether they buy from you right now or not. The first is find out how you can service their need. Hopefully you already know because you've already had that interaction with them and got to know them. Reach out personally, and I'm a big fan of doing that by voice messages. It's quick, it's easy, you can use their name and they can hear your tone. I love that. Also, don't leave it there. Get them into your VIP Facebook group or onto your email database so you can nurture them over time. Just because the party's over doesn't mean the relationship's over. You've now made all these connections, so use them. And don't close the loop. Get yourself another party booking if you can while you're live. A few little suggestions to do that are to remind them of the benefits. So it might be that they get excited about that free gift. But remember, not everyone is incentivized by the freebies. Some of them are just going to love the fact that you're inspiring and they can help inspire healthy living. They might know someone in their family that they really want to help to get uh, into a new stage of their health. And so this could be a great opportunity for them to do that. So that might be their incentive. Um, and it's an opportunity to socialize. Everyone right now is loving hanging out with family and friends. They're a bit starved for it. So remember that your host may not just care about the free gifts. It could be some other stuff there too. Remember as well, make it super simple for them. Don't make it sound complicated. 
And of course, check out the JP Sales Tools for Resources. So um, you've got thank you cards in there, lots of bits and pieces that you can use. Put together a little gift, a little incentive, something that makes them feel super special. And tell them the basic process of how a virtual party or event will go to ease any uncertainty that they might have. And it's that simple, guys. So hopefully this has, although been a lot of information, has been super helpful and you've taken a ton of notes. If you've got any questions or you want some help, I would love for you to reach out, guys. Um, jump onto our Facebook page. Uh, let us know if you want a little bit of extra help. If you've got some questions, we would love to assist you in that space. But remember, in the virtual office, you guys have got heaps of resources to use to help you with this process. Uh, so hopefully you've really enjoyed this. I can't wait to see all the virtual parties and events happening. Now, as a very last little thing, I also want to let you guys know that if you are interested in learning a little bit more about how to generate leads on Facebook, We've also got a webinar coming up as well uh, next week where it's completely free. We're going to show you uh, how to generate leads on Facebook. In fact, I think we've also got one happening in the next couple of days. So what the girls will do is they'll pop that link up here now for you. So if you'd like to join that webinar and check that out, uh, I'll click on that now so you guys can, there it is. So you guys can check that webinar out. You can jump in and join us and we'll show you how to generate leads for your Juice Plus business. Um, on Facebook, which is all important when it comes to virtual parties. Um, but guys, uh, that's it. We're, uh, we've got a little bit of a chance now for some questions as well. I know that we didn't get a chance to answer questions as we we're going through because I was put on a time frame. So I know it didn't look like it, but I was like speaking really fast. <laughs> you did so well. Sam. Oh my gosh. So he said, don't you dare take over an hour. <laughs> You did brilliantly. There was oh, so much yeah. fantastic information in there. You did really, really, really good. And just to answer some questions, because I know there's been um, 